I'm shaking so bad right now, dude. I'm so jazzed up. <laughs> All right, so the first set, Russ had texted me and said they'd been working some ground down here along the river and there was three coyotes watching them all day long. He had deer hunters in there that were seeing coyotes. And then when we picked up Mike, Mike's telling us also about all the coyotes down here on the river. So obviously that we fixed I think about it a little bit because I know all, all this land real good. And we go up, slip up along the river and sit in this tree row. And this, this, where these coyotes all come from is a big block of timber, like 50 acres. I play a little of this and a little of that. And I think I'm playing lucky bird. And it's kind of to the point where I'm thinking nothing's going to show up. He's dead, Rick. And totally from the right to where we're not even looking, here comes a coyote. And honestly, it had to come by the pickup within 100 yards, but it must not, sometimes you never know. You know, if they want to get in there, they'll figure out a way. Boom, it took out of there. And honestly, I was a nervous wreck after not on my game shooting the previous day, especially if that bobcat, and I was nervous and I caught up with it and I was trying to talk myself out of more lead, not as much lead, and I went ahead and let it go. So I guess like they say, blind squirrel finds a nut every now and then, I guess. So I rolled, I, I, I got that coyote. And so I turned the pup fight on, crank it up pretty good, and we're sitting there, ha <laughs> ho, and all, all of a sudden here comes three more out of the timber we were actually expecting them to come from. Three of them. The whole goal was to get back in here far enough where they wouldn't see us and this tree kind of got me. That first shot, I used my red dot, I shot right over the top of him, but I got him on the second one. Hit that se the second one out there running, but I don't think I got him real great. He ran into that tree line. This one, I never saw what happened to it. Jeff and I emptied our guns before it was all said and done. We're looking across a 400 yard winter wheat field. <laughs> and we did not see those coyotes till they were halfway across that sector. Just blended in so well. You know, that's why you stick with it. You know, early on in the stand, probably six, seven minutes in, we shot that, Rick shot that first coyote. It came from the right. You know, these early morning stands, coyotes are on the move, so you know, it did not hurt to sit there. And that's exactly what happened. Maybe six, eight minutes later, Rick kind of upped the progression in the, in the sounds and was playing some pup distress, and that's where these three you know, were coming to. There's another one coming.
and lo and behold, we look out there and there's a coyote coming. So, uh, and he was, he was coming without the call even going, so I kind of got situated on him and he started fading off a little downwind, so I had to keep scooting out, scooting out because I had that branch in my way and he got to about 200 yards and I finally said it was enough was enough and, and I, it took a lot to compose myself to make that shot. I was not real confident. I was pretty shaky. I was still amped up from that triple coming in, um, but uh, kind of held, took a breath, let it out, made a shot. I hit him a little high on the back. I'm totally out of shells. <laughs> I'm pulling shells out of my sling. <laughs> um, so he actually ended up getting up and going again. And uh, I started shooting at him. And because and, uh, at that point, you got to get the coyote killed because he's trying to get away. I actually ran my clip dry in my AR. Luckily, I keep two shells in my sling. And uh, I <laughs> was loading them in one at a time. And on my, on my last shot, I rolled him out there probably 300 yards and, and killed him. So um, just, just an exciting stand and, and an awesome way to start the day with a triple. So when you're hunting with multiple, you know, this particular day we had three shooters and and if you're able to you know I like to spread out sometimes the problem with spreading out when you when you're hunting with multiple guys is you lose communication he's gonna pop up right down right at the far right edge of the, of the tree row he's gonna pop up straight to the north of you straight to the north in the tree line. Just took a little bit louder sound. Rick started off with uh, kind of a smaller, squeakier rabbit. This coyote came from way down the wind, clear down there, probably 500 yards. He turned Lucky Pecker on, it's just a little bit louder sound. <clears throat> We're trying to communicate, I'm kind of covering the downwind side. If that coyote would have turned out here a little bit, he might have smelled these guys because they're out in front of us a little bit. So, went in and took the shot, it's only about a 100 yard shot, and he popped up in that low spot. I didn't know if they could see him or not. So. And so you really have to weigh your odds when you get to a stand. Is it worth spreading out and losing that communication in order to gain, gain coverage of the area you're trying to, trying to call? And on this particular stand, I thought it was worthwhile for, for the camp, one of the cameramen and I to slip up back kind of on the downwind side, back by an old, I think it was a, a pump house, about in the middle of the field. Well, Rick stayed back by the old farmstead with the call, and it allowed us to see a little bit more of the upwind side in case the coyote popped up out of that tree line and started coming in. So, and that's exactly what happened. Maybe three, four minutes in, you know, Rick was playing Lucky Pecker again, which was really the sound of the day. We killed a lot of coyotes on that. And uh, we watched this coyote come and he came and it would check up a little bit, but he was gaining ground. And I didn't know if they had seen him yet. And he popped up right below me uh, on the point of a tree line. He kind of made his way around, but uh, uh, he was off to the side. 
100 yard shot, you know, very makeable. You take your time and, and uh, put him down, you know, right where he stood, so. So it's getting about the middle of the day. I'm by far not running out of spots to go yet, but I try around here, you know, in the morning, first few stand, hit them good ones, them high producers, and then late in the afternoon, go to them good stands. And I try to just try some new stuff maybe in the middle of the day. So Russ's dad had told me that there'd been coyotes in his yard running his dog around and this and that. So there's a just a little draw in there with some slough grass and most people, you know, wouldn't even mess with it because it's not a lot. Up on top of the hill, there's a hedgerow, probably parked 50 yards from it. It was really getting windy midday. We get up there on the end of this hedgerow and I don't like it, we don't like it, but we go ahead and make the stand because you can't see back the camera crew and Jeff actually stood up, me and Mike sat down and I did a long howl that Sook, the first one in the long howl folder. Let her howl, pretty mid tw mid 20s on volume, which is really loud, but I mean, it's getting, it's getting windy. Jeff alerts me that they see one down there in this slough grass just for a second. And so I quick turn a pup fight on and coming, coming. He's what? So, and we hadn't really had this talk with Mike. I just assumed he knew don't shoot till we say shoot, you know, with the cameras and everything going. And Let him come, let him come, Mike. Let him come, Mike. Bang. Me and Mike talked a little bit. He said, oh, I thought he somebody said shoot. And I believe Jeff was just letting us know it was coming. And I'd kind of give up. And Jeff says, no, there's still one down there. So I changed up the pup fight, turned a different one on. And a lot of times you play a, a fight and shoot at him, you turn a different one on. A lot of times they'll, not always, you know, but you never know. You just can't give up. So I changed up different pup fight. Here come another one. It was going for the downwind. Woo! The setup was a little unconventional. There's a big dip right here. That's why I'm way up on my knees because I knew we'd get a coyote coming right down in that dip. Only way I'd have seen him is way up high like that. So we're pretty jazzed up because we just missed a coyote. Now we just killed one and we're pumped up and, and you know, we're thinking, okay, the, the slough's not very far. So probably anything that was going to come as, as came at this point, we've been sitting there maybe eight, nine minutes and uh, we actually stand up to leave and, and we see a coyote that had just popped up on the uh, farther down the slough, about 300 yards from where I saw the first one. And he can't see us because when we stood up, we had the tree line behind us. So we dropped back down, Rick fired back up the call, um, put on, I think, schoolyard brawl maybe, or one of those, one of those pup fights. On the same path as the very first one. We'll stop him for you, Mike, all right? Just take your time. Woo! Woo! Take your time, wait until he stops. <laughs> How's that for a redeemer shot? <laughs> and it wasn't just a minute later and here this old coyote comes right in the same path the very first one came and we're like, all right, Mike, it's time for redemption. And this coyote came running right in and we're barking and trying to get it to stop. And coyote finally stops maybe 40 yards in front of us and Mike dumps him and man, we all went crazy. And, and Mike was laughing and smiling and he redeemed himself. And we just, uh, we killed the double in the middle part of the day with hardly any cover. And, and these coyotes came in great.
So the next stand, we're, it's really getting windy now and we're trying to, when it gets windy around here, I try to get in real tight to the cover, right? Within a couple of hundred yards where I think they might be bedded up. You can get away with more noise because of the wind. We didn't have the wind right here. So what we do is put the call way up wind and it'll draw them out of wherever you think they are and they'll just slip right by you sometimes right out you don't even have to move the gun just bark at them when they when they're headed to the call and that's what happened on this hunt Before we walk out and pick up this coyote, I want to talk to you a little bit about the setup. We have kind of a, a south wind with a little touch of west in it. So the wind is blowing just enough where it's keeping our scent blowing back into this tree row. You know, as you can see, this bottom carries all the way down there and it actually goes that way further, but we kind of had to isolate one particular area. And by getting the call out, upwind and out in front of us about 40 or 50 yards, our goal was if a coyote did come from down there, it would funnel them out and keep them out in the winter wheat instead of letting them get up tight along the tree row to come up to us where they could possibly wind us. And that's exactly what this coyote did. He came in almost straight down wind of the call, but it kept him out in front of us as he was working up to the sound and brought him right down the firing squad. It's not rocket science. You just gotta, you gotta work at it. If it ain't working, change it up. Try something different. It's old school.